Hello, hello everyone. Today I'm gonna do a quick compilation of what I think are the 10 best premiums that you can buy right now or access, achieve in any way, basically acquire. This means I'm not gonna be mentioning things like Benham or Julius Cesar, Kutuzov, uh, kamikaze basically belfast basically all these really broken ships that you can get through uh, through christmas gifts or similar types of crates i'm not going to be mentioning them at all these are ships that you can get right now if you log into the game right now there's one way or another you can uh, access this either through steel or coal or doubloons or just straight up buying them regardless these are the ships that you can get this is my top 10 which means yes there is no doubt there will be people who will disagree there are people who will be of a different opinion there were people who will who who will think I'm completely insane. I mean, they, it happens every time. Whatever, I don't care. I get asked this so many times. What do you think of X premium? What do you think of Y premium? So I'm gonna give you my top ten list of premiums in uh, January 2020. Okay, the new year has just started. These are the ships that I think are a really really good investment as of right now. First off, of course, we have the Massachusetts Tier Eight American Premium. Um, gun accuracy can be trolley, but they, the guns still hit pretty hard, 406mm guns. It's got insane secondaries, they are actually more accurate than pretty much all other secondaries, even without manual secondaries. They fire longer, they fire faster, um, it has an amazing AA suit for its tier. Um, if you angle this thing, it's actually surprisingly hard to kill because you also have a fast acting fast reloading heal which reloads half as quickly as basically the normal american battleship heal it's got really good torpedo protection and even the concealment is pretty good the downsides are um, the main battery accuracy is pretty trollish well i did mention that the shells are slow if you played north carolina you know what i mean it's kind of hard to, to aim these guns you need to lead a lot which can be difficult but the secondaries tend to make up for that um and of the rudder shift is pretty eh and of course the fact that you have 32 millimeter plating on most parts of your ship besides the central deck armor means that well HE spammers enjoy farming you. Besides that, the ship is a monster at tier 8. Coming in at the number 9th spot on my list is the Alaska. Another American ship, this time a tier 9 cruiser. Well, it's more of a battle cruiser or a large cruiser or a super cruiser, whatever you want to call it, it still gets matchmaking like a cruiser. It has 305mm main battery guns, which have crazy pen and are especially strong against cruisers because of those improved penetration angles. Combine that with radar, the ability to spot all around you, the large health pool, the good concealment, the generally just good armor and waterline citadel means that it is extremely well protected. Even the AA is pretty good. But the best, the thing that it does best is just bully other cruisers around. And if you're close enough range, you can actually even citadel battleships in the things. The downsides are it's pretty vulnerable to HE spam because it has that increased fire duration. It's larger and more clumsy because, well, it's more of a battle cruiser than an actual cruiser. And you can't really nose in tank uh, battleships or just HE spam like a battleship could because, well, you got 27 millimeter nose plating and you are a large ship and especially at long ranges you can be citadeled quite easily that does not change the fact that um, for a free xp investment the alaska is a monstrously powerful ship at tier 9. in the eighth place i have the bayard a tier 8 french premium cruiser which is a strange combination of a charles charles martel and a cleveland it's probably the fastest tier 8 cruiser in the game uh able to do 43 knots with the speed boost and the speed flag and the dpm this ship can put out is absolutely obscene it's 211k he dpm which when you compare something like a kutuzov or irian they both do less than 200k uh the montpellier does 226 so it's almost magic is it but what really sets the bayard apart besides the speed and this firepower is the fact that it's a light cruiser that has access to reload booster which means that if you set fires for example on a battleship and the battleship uses damage con 
you can pop that reload booster and for a brief period of time you get a 50% shorter reload on your main guns which when you already have this much firepower and you're such a good fire starter um, it basically guarantees fires and this thing is painful to deal with for any battleship add in the fact that it's got improved he pen 29 without ifhe capable of penning 38 with ifhe which means you can even farm Ger uh, american battleship deck armor which is 38 and for example fusa which is 35 you can pen it all combined with the firepower it is incredibly powerful and probably one of the if not the strongest tier 8 cruiser in the game so the Bayard easily earns that 8 spot keep in mind it also has 30 millimeter central deck armor and upper belt so you can bounce a lot of AP in the 7 spot I have the Ohio the tier 10 American battleship that you can access through the research bureau now it's hard to not look at this ship and instantly think well this is basically just a better Montana the Montana has better AA, but Wargaming has gone out of their way to basically kill all AA effectiveness. So that advantage that the Montana had doesn't really matter as much anymore. In return though, the Ohio, instead of having 12 guns, it only has 8. But these guns are 457 millimeters, which means they overmatch 30 millimeter plating. Which means the majority of cruiser can cruisers can't really angle against it. Add in faster reload and better penetration. And these guns are significantly more scary than Montana's guns. Add in that it also has the fast acting heel of the Massachusetts and the Georgia, so it's significantly tankier, harder to kill. It also has an insane secondary suit, similar to that of the Massachusetts, uh, with that improved accuracy, which means, of course, you also shred destroyers and generally you brawl significantly better it's quite obvious why I rank this ship as the number 7th. What I'm able to do to this um, uh, Salem is something that you can do to the vast majority of the cruisers, with very few exceptions, since most of, most of them have about 30mm or less of pl armor plating. In the 6th spot, I have another American battleship. This time, the Georgia, the Tier 9 American battleship. It has the same insane guns of the Ohio, 457 millimeters, but the difference is it only has six of them. The dispersion is, however, brutal, and of course, being able to overage 30 millimeters of plating is even more dangerous at this tier. However, besides also having the fast acting heal and insane secondaries once again, the Georgia also has access to that incredible French speed boost, which means it's actually one of the fastest battleships in the game, and it allows you to pull off these absolutely ridiculous flanks and ambushes on ships that they don't really expect or see coming. This doesn't make it just powerful because it's so fast and agile on the battlefield, it also makes it hilariously fun to play because you can basically appear anywhere and you are such a hard ship to stop because of that combination of firepower, speed, armor, fast acting heal, secondaries. Basically, the Georgia is absolutely jam-packed with these ridiculous gimmicks and easily earns the sixth most powerful premium on my list because, well, it's hard to argue otherwise. At number 5, I have the first steel ship of this list, and that is the Submerse, a strange hybrid of, let's say, a Shimakaze and a Gearing. Whereas it doesn't quite have the firepower of the Gearing, it actually loses out a bit, even though it has more guns, uh, the reload is so much so slower. It loses out in DPM and it doesn't really have gearings AA. It does, on the other hand, have access to those American smokes, which gives it, of course, excellent team utility because you can smoke up your teammates for absolutely a lifetime. The important aspect of this ship is the torpedoes. It can launch 12 torpedoes and all those these and although these don't hit as hard as for example Shimakaze torpedoes these things only hit for 18k damage they are very fast at 66 knots they have an incredible range of 16.5 basically the same thing as the gearing and they have gearing's torpedo concealment which is 1.4 kilometers this combination of hard hitting alpha volley with great concealment great range and great speed means that you can catch ships across the map completely off guard and you can delete any ships we're talking dds cruisers battleships you can delete any of them with this ship 
Now note that because these guns are, it's a different model of guns than the gearing, the Sommers guns are not dual purpose, which means the ship has absolutely garbage AA, not that DDs really can do much against carriers, but when it comes to pure torpedo power, it's hard to argue against the Sommers. If the Benham didn't exist, this would be by far the strongest American torpedo boat in my opinion. And that's why the Sommers easily makes my top 5. In the number 4 spot, I am a ship that has quickly be made a reputation for itself and that is mostly thanks to its guns and that is the Soviet Stalingrad, a Soviet super cruiser that packs some of the most ridiculous guns in the game. The guns have enough penetration to make many battleships blush, they have about 25% more penetration than any other tier 10 super cruiser in the game and in fact they do have more penetration than some of the lower cal caliber tier 10 battleships ships add in 2.65 sigma improved penetration angles a weird shell fuse that basically arms far too fast and the fact that the fuse arming threshold is much lower than it should be and you have some really really questionable stellinium bullshit shells that are a threat to any ship at any range and in the fact that of course you got 12 km Soviet radar and combined once again with this shell velocity and this accuracy you're a scary threat to basically any ship that enters your range. That includes destroyers that get caught in your radar and with a 12 km radar it's hard to completely avoid it. Now, just because the guns are magical though, doesn't mean that it doesn't have its fair share of weaknesses. This includes extremely poor concealment, clumsiness, huge size, and a very, very large vulnerable citadel if you are caught broadside. And when it came out, there was significantly less powerful HE spammers available than there are now, and there were significantly less IFHE counters that could deal with it. So Stalingrad has gotten balanced a fair bit by basically power creep everywhere else but that doesn't make these guns any less terrifying when you're on the receiving end of them. As my top three ship I have the Borgogne, the French tier 10 premium battleship. Now this ship isn't particularly easy to play because it's basically the squishiest tier 10 battleship. It has no super heal uh, and it has a very low HP pool and generally the armor is quite thin. What it does on the other hand have is 12 guns, only 380 millimeter guns, which means uh, cruisers and many other ships can angle against them quite easily, but they reload extremely fast, the shell velocity is good, and thanks to having access to good concealment and in general this, um, French speed boost, it means that you can actually sneak around the map and you can catch ships entirely off guard. And as you saw there, the incredible range 24.8 also allows you to take pot shots and just appearing in front of ships where they don't expect you to be. Cruisers who never f expected you to come around the corner will be caught off guard and then basically just blapped away by that incredible firepower. Add in that main battery reload booster and well, you're basically vomiting out shells at an absolutely terrifying pace. It doesn't mean that the ship doesn't have weaknesses, as I mentioned, 32mm plating all over means HE spammers love you, love HP, low HP pull means that any citadels and torpedoes cripple you heavily. It is not a particularly easy ship to play. It is in fact quite challenging because if you are faced with a 1 versus 1, they can just angle against you and mitigate a large amount of the damage you pump out. With HE though, you can mitigate this, but as with the Sean Bart, and the reason why, for example, the Sean Bart isn't on the list, the turrets are very squishy. So if someone targets your turrets, they can quite easily break them. But if you manage to position correctly and you manage to close the distance, brawling a Bon Jovi isn't actually particularly fun because at that point blank range, uh, it can bring eight guns to bear just using the front of the ship. And if you're for playing a Kremlin like this guy does and not angling enough, you can actually out brawl multiple ships with this thing. So a fairly high skill cap battleship but terrifyingly powerful in the right hands and just looking at the stats across the board some battleship players have just been able to pump out absolutely monstrous numbers in this ship. Easily earns the top 3 spot on my list. Great fun, super powerful but also quite vulnerable in some situations. Excellent premium ship. In number two, I have the British battleship Thunderer. Now, 
If it wasn't for the Kremlin, I would say this is the most overpowered tier 10 battleship in the game, but Kremlin still exists, so luckily we can't quite call it that. I'm not gonna go too in detail here, I just featured this ship in a commentary fairly recently, but the Thunderer basically has great AP, great HE, excellent reload, excellent accuracy, um, the 457mm guns allows you to overmatch cruises to try to angle against you, it's surprisingly agile for its size, it's ha it has great concealment, it does have access to defensive fire, it actually has an improved heal as well, it reloads faster and heals more than normal, um, normal heal does. The downsides are the shell velocity is fairly slow, so it takes some getting used to how slow the shells are. You need to learn to lead properly, but if you do, the ship will be very rewarding. The armor scheme is honestly pretty weak. You can get HE spam pretty easily, and you have a large citadel, which makes you a poor brawler. But in general, in terms of effectiveness and power, the Thunder is an absolute monster, and if you like battleships with strong guns, you would probably rate this as the number one premium instead of the one that I am ranking as number one. Enemy cruiser sunk. The premium ship that I rank as the strongest right now is the Smolensk. The Soviet tier 10 light premium cruiser. Multiple reasons for this, um, incredibly ease of use, the ship is just stupidly easy to play, you slow down, you pop a smoke, you spam H at your targets until they stop moving. You can switch to AP when they give broadside, but honestly if you don't feel like it, they will probably die due to the absolutely overwhelming HE DPM that this ship can pump out. It has a ridiculously high chance of starting fires, because well, it just throws out a ridiculous amount of shells at the target. Um, the HE DPM is 384, actually 400. 85 considering everyone will be, will be running the build that bumps it up. In comparison, something like a Hindenburg has less than 200,000. Now, of course, the lack of penetration on the low shells will affect this somewhat, but you just barbecue stuff. You start so many fires, it's not even close. No one else really even comes close to your firing starting, uh, fire starting ability. Not even the booster comes anywhere close. And it's supposed to be a light cruiser, but it's stupidly fast, and it actually has such a thin armor on the Citadel that if you're in close range with enemy battleships and you just give full broadside, the AP doesn't even arm. Your, your armor is too thin and the Citadel is too thin, so even hits on your Citadel end up, be, end up being overpens. So you can sail full broadside next to enemy battleships and just straight up get away with it, because the ship is so brain dead to play. You shred cruisers, especially with IFHE, you shred battleship, DDs, you absolutely demolish as well. It basically has 16 Grossovoi guns attached to it. Uh, the engine also has issues rendering these shells, so when you're shooting from smokes, the shell tracers actually render further away from the ship that they should. So for example, people who have no issues devastating a Minotaur sitting in a smoke firing will struggle to hit the small ends, because where the tracers start isn't where the ship actually is. The ship is monstrously powerful, incredibly easy to use, effective against all targets, and available for coal. It is very hard not to rate this as the number one premium right now. Now, I'm not rating this as the number one premium because I think it's the most fun to play. Um, in fact, in my opinion, I think the Thunder and the Bon Jovi or the Burger, uh, Borgogne are much more enjoyable to play than the Smolensk. I actually play it quite, uh, quite a few times. Um, but... In terms of power, it's hard to deny just how completely ridiculous and absurd this ship is. It has everything you could ask for, it except basically radar. But it doesn't need it because, well, anything that's spotted by your DDs or radars or planes or whatever, you will instantly melt in the ship at almost any ranges. Smolensk is my number one. I hope you guys enjoyed this little list of different chips. As always, if you feel like dropping a follow on my Twitch channel, we're actually approaching 100k, we're at 93 point something k, so we're almost at that 100k huge giveaway. And if of course you feel like dropping a subscription on my YouTube, I appreciate both of it. If not, I still appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. As always, feel free to tell me in the comments how terrible my list is and how much better your list actually is, because that's what people love to do on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you guys later.